if Willie joins us, it joins us. That's cool. <laughs> do, 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 do. Right, good evening, everyone. It is nearly set. It's one minute to seven. We're early. We're early by a minute. Good evening. It's welcome to Eagles Chat with a very, very special guest tonight. We are going to be joined very shortly by the one and only... If I said his name, I'll probably say it wrong, but I'll just say like everybody else says, QLT. <laughs> Evening, boss. Evening. You all right? Yeah. First thing, do not ever wear another shirt for Sheffield Eagles at a game as long as you live. All right? I've even found mine one out, and this is tight. This is really, really tight. It is tight, because the player ones, so they oh. are tight, and and they are very different to the fan ones. Um, uh, mine fits. <laughs> fits. <laughs> There's a, there, there, is, there are issues going on below the shoulders, but, you know, it'll do. Well, I'll wear, it, I'll wear it until we lose again. When I first started going to Eagles, I used to wear Brisbane Bronco shirts, and we went ages without losing. And then we got absolutely walloped by Jewsbury, and I didn't wear any more since. So, um, well, I'll, I'll keep it going for as long as we do. Yeah, well, talking. Okay. I'm not wearing it on Sunday. I've got a special one lined up for Sunday. Saturday. That's, Saturday. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. the bash, isn't it? Yeah. Are you still not joining us? Can you not do There's it? There's no chance. There is no way in hell. There's no trains and nothing, nothing happening. Yeah, I'll just remind everybody that uh, cross country and northern. Uh, well, I think we've got a guest joining us. Just quickly, cross country and northern who are, who run the trains to Leeds are operating Saturday, so you, you can do it. We are joined by current legend and I mean legend of the of the Sheffield Eagles. He's looking all over the place, and I think he's trying to get through to it. Mister QLT, good evening, sir. Hey, how's it going? Can you see me? Yes, we can see and hear you. Great, mate. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very, very much. Nah, thanks for having me. Oh, thanks yeah. For having me. And you're the first guest that's ever had a cup, that's ever got a cup in his hand when he's joining us on his You're ready, you know. It's you really have the Red Bull and Lucas in and other stuff. The good room never hurt anyone. Yeah, what did Thax have? I think Thax had a cup. I don't know what Thax... I think he had a bottle of pop or something like that. But, that and, uh, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what yeah. Joel had, but must have been something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, how you been, sir? Anyway, no, I've been good. Been good. Um, I'm still a bit sore from uh, Sunday's game, but um, other than that, been yeah, been good. Yeah. So, what's the secret to your eternal youth? By the way, what is the secret? <laughs> well, it's um, I guess I've just been <laughs> just um, just the genes that have been passed down to me. Um, <laughs> no, but I've I've really looked looked after myself um, the last uh, five or so years, um, you know, just with my recovery and, um, you know, my training and, and what I eat and, and, and all that stuff. And, and I think it's, it's helped me a lot. And um, I think COVID helped as well, kind of put, you know, another two or three years in my legs. So, um, I, yeah, I think just, just all of that combines kind of helped me um, play, you know, at my age right now. Excellent. Go on, Mark. I know you've been waiting for this for a long, long time. Go on, sir. I want, to, I want to ask you the ultimate question. How do you correctly pronounce your full name? Because we get four <laughs> of stuff. We get, we've had Quentin, Laulu, Tagage, Tonga guy, Tonga guy. We've had all sorts over the years. So clear it all up and tell us what is it? It's, um, so it's Laulu. So the first one's Laulu. And Laulu. the last one's um, Tonga guy. Tonga Hai, right. So the way we pronounce our G's in um in Samoan is Nga. Ah. Yeah, so it's La Ulu Tonga Ngae. Well, we've all, I would have never I used to, that. Used, yeah, I used, used, used to give it a good crack. Um, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> you um, used give it a go and I think you've done quite well. Man. That's brilliant. Thanks very much. Um, I'm just so yeah. happy I don't do the substitutes announcements anymore. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> after after I did with Wesley Savatabu in the nineties, I really got told off for that one. So, I uh, I learned the I hard just, way. I think they've just given up and they now just say QLT, which everybody knows. Everybody knows <laughs> yeah, I think QLT everyone does. Anyway, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, even well, yeah, even the commentary. Say QLT. Yeah, even the commentary on Premier Sports against Widners, it was just they wouldn't say it. It was just Andrew Andrew Henderson just going, "Oh yeah, QLT's on the board." Yeah, especially That's... Hendo. <laughs> well, Hendo should be given there to go. Hendo, man. Uh, it just said it every two. I, I watched it again on Free Sports and just saying that, and then he's going, "Oh yeah, there's QRT. And I went, 
oh, he's not going to say it. He's not going <laughs> to do it. And <laughs> yeah, Hendo always takes the easy option. Loves it. I think I've heard that before. I think I've heard quite a few of that one before. <laughs> um, so how did it all start with rugby league for you then? All the years, I mean, when you was a kid and everything, who was your heroes and things like that when you started? Yeah, so I, I started in um, Auckland, New Zealand. That's where I was born, um, to Samoan parents. Um, so I I played rugby league. I, I started playing when I was nine. Um, and I have uh, four four boys in my family. So we all, um, my, my parents took us down to the local um, junior club, which was Marist Saints, and um, enrolled us into to the club. Um, it's, quite, it's quite a big club in, in Auckland. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, ex-Kiwi players and, and all of that to come out of that club. So that's where I kind of started off playing rugby league, uh, played rugby union as well, coming through um, primary school. And then um, I moved to... Australia when I was about 11 or 12, my, my parents wanted, you know, a bit of a change, moved to Australia and just continued playing rugby in, um, in Brisbane. So I moved to Brisbane and um, to Inala, a suburb, a suburb called um, Inala and oh, um, yes. just continued playing it. rugby there. I, I know it, my, um, so I've got a, sorry to jump in, I've got an uncle who lives in, uh, who's lived in Queensland since the late 60s and they lived in Inala when they first moved there. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. So uh, they live in Red Bank now. They've lived in Ipswich to Wumba, but they're in Red Bank. But they did they used to live in Inala. Yeah. Oh, Red Bank. Yeah, yeah. So Brisbane's yeah. like Brisbane's home now. Like when when I say we're going home, um, we're going home to Brisbane. Um, so my family lives in Inala, but my my wife's family they stay in Acacia Ridge, which is um just the next suburb from Inala. So it's quite close to each other. Yeah, and I just continue playing rugby over there. Um, you know until. You know, uh, I became, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I made my Queensland Cup debut when I was uh, still in high school, at 17 years years old, and then just continued playing rugby league um, ever since. My heroes were quite, uh, my heroes growing up were all Polynesian um, players. Um, David Salamona, Ali Lautiri, was like the players I, I kind of um, looked up to. And then, um, you know, I used to like watching uh, Andrew Johns as well when, um, you know, when I was growing up as well. Yeah, the halfback <clears throat> when you were when the um, and jo Andrew Jones was just a legend of the game anyway. Incredible player, play. incredible, phenomenal yeah. player. Uh, first question we've got tonight of a long list of them. Sorry to say, Billy Michael White asks. I'll start to think. Oh, oh no, no, no! I get that out of the way. Oh, my, my eyes are going crazy. Billy P asking most memorable try in a final for us. Oh, it would have to be the 2012 <laughs> one against Featherstone. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I think it was about, I think 10 of us must have touched the ball and I was lucky enough to, um, you know, be that last person. I think it was um, Scott, Scott or Missy or Scotty T passed it to me and I just finished it off. So yeah. that was, a, that was yeah. a big one because um, it was our second grand final um, when we played against Fev and the year before that we got pumped from Fev. Um, or I think it was like 44-6 and... You know, to go back to back against Featherston again and to score that try was, um, you know, it was awesome thing. We we recently voted it uh, by proxy the best try the Eagles have ever scored, and yeah. fortunately you were on the end of it. But yeah, I think oh. it was Noza, Menze, <clears throat> Misse, Scott, and then you. Yeah, I yeah, know, it, too, like yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just really silly, and it was just incredible. You know, yeah, that, that, that would have to be up up there as um, yeah, probably be the most memorable try. Oh. Question from me: How did it feel make, playing with your son at Keithley? Oh, that's um. I think that would be like the highlight of my career. Um, I've been fortunate enough to um, you know, make plates in three grand finals with, with Sheffield. Um, win two. I played a grand final in Queensland Cup with South Slogan. Um, and we won that against it was Jet. Um, you know, I played for my country. Um, so more something I always dreamed of um doing when I was. When I was a kid, but um, playing, you know, with my son, that'll be um, the highlight. Um, you know, it's something that not many, not many dads, um, you know, have, um, you know, gone through and, and um, been able to do. And to say that I, I managed to play with my son, um, you know, in, in a professional environment. Oh, you need to go to the toilet. 
I don't know. He, he does that sometimes. No, no. I mean, um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's up there, bro. Yeah, I know. Keith, they put the video on of you being on the same pitch at the same time in the same move, and it was it was brilliant to see. I mean, um, do you remember when Jack Howison used to do those um, such rugby games down at uh, the school near where we used to live? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he brought Phoenix down a couple of times, and I mean, he was only about what 15, 14, 15 then, and he was just like, oh. and we were all, we were all just looking at each other, going, "This kid's going a long way," you know. With the right coaching and development, he's going to go a long way. And well, there he is playing for. Well, is he playing for KR? I mean, he's, I know he's there, but is he? Is yeah, he he's there. Well, he's had he's had one game. Um, he, he made his debut quite earlier in the year against um Cass. Um, he was close. He was 18th man last week, so um, he's been close a few times. Um, but it's just it's all just all about um development with Phoenix. Um, you know, especially with the position that he's playing, fullback. Um, he he's. He's been away from rugby league for a few years, playing at Leicester Tigers Academy. So that kind of um, halted his development with rugby league because fullbacks different in rugby union compared to rugby league. So um, we said when he signed for Hulk KR, um, any Super League game will be, um, you know, a massive bonus. Um, he, he he wanted to go this year just to purely make it as a development year with with full time environment with uh, Lachlan Coot over there at Hulk KR. So. Um, yeah, so it's been a massive bonus to be able to play one Super League game. Amazing. Is he still living at home or have you kicked him out? No, he's still living at home. Still, uh, <laughs> I still tell him what to do and everything. So I um, haven't kicked him out yet. Um, still pays, you know, helps with, you know, rent and, and board and does the chores and that. So yeah, yeah, yeah still, still hasn't, um, still haven't moved out yet. We've uh, got a question here from an old person, uh, Simone Lindsay, yeah. Brendan's wife. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who does he who, who does he rate the better comp? The Queensland Cup with South Logan or Championship in the UK? Oh, no, uh, oh it's it's tough now because I, I think championships um become really competitive from um when I first come over. Um like obviously I haven't been back in years, so um I I I can't really um can't really say right now, but championship is um I think it'll be on par to Queensland Cup. I, I think the back then when I first came, there was there was really six teams in championship that were competing, um, and the rest of the teams were, um, you know, pretty much making the numbers. But um, you know, nowadays, you know, any team can beat any team. So um, yeah, com I think compared to when I first came out, I think championships come a long way, and and it's gone. Um, it's become really competitive um, in a sense where. Uh, you know, there's there's top championship teams that can knock off you know lower grade um super league teams. So, um, yeah, right now I can't really can't really say um which comp is is the better comp because I've I've been in England for eleven years now. But um, I, you know, I think it's uh, I think it'll be quite equal now. I think. I mean, speaking of speaking of whole being here eleven years, how did the move to the Sheffield come about? You know, tell us the story behind it. Um. Were you looking to come to England? Or, you know, oh, so, we, um, we, always, we always ask this, you know, were you looking to come to England or did you, did you just think, oh, I fancy the cold weather for a bit or how did it all come about? So I was playing for South Slogan in um, Brisbane and my, the assistant coach was, um, was, his name was Carl. He played for Sheffield with Tubbs. What is his last name? Love it. Love it. Oh. No, no, no. He was a half back in the day. He played with Tubbs. His name Briggs. Carl. I'm bad with names. Yeah, My name is Carl, yeah, and he, Carl he asked me if if, if <clears throat> um, I ever wanted to try and um, come to England and play. Yeah. And so he got into contact with Tubbs, um, and then you know we started talking with Tubbs, but he wanted to sign me, but I couldn't get over because um, I had a, like to come over. I had to play a certain amount of NRL games or international um, games, so I hadn't played um, any of them until I, in 2010. I made the Samoan team managed to play, uh, you know, two games or so more. And then I was able to come over uh, after after that year. Uh, yeah, well, I signed a two-year contract. Um, you know, I spoke to my wife and we, all, we decided we'll come over for two years and kind of, you know, um, try something different. And then we'll head back home. But 11 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the Sheffield welcome, isn't it? What's no, the yeah. what's the difference? Don, what do you prefer, Don Valley Stadium at Olympic Legacy Park? Oh, uh, 
while grass Tom Valley Stadium. <laughs> the three G's um, a bit hard. Uh, wow. um, Olympic Park, but I don't know. I think the way they've done the stadium right now, um, I think it's really good. As I think um, once they let the um, the fans sit on the grass and that on the side there, I think it would make it a really good environment. Um, you know, the fans are close to the action, so um, Don Valley was pretty good. But um, I, I think this has the potential to be um, a really good stadium for Sheffield. What's the favourite stadium you've played in in England? Oh, I think when you talk about atmosphere, um, I think uh, Castleford Stadium would be up there. Um, just playing at a packed um, Castleford Stadium was quite a surreal, um, you know, experience. You know, Around being able to play over there. So yeah. it was. Um, I, I'll say that would have to be up there, um, atmosphere-wise. Oh, excellent. Yeah, Castleford's got an atmosphere of it. So, I mean, I don't think it's ever changed in the early years I've watched rugby league. So, uh, but uh, they've got plans to change it and hopefully it gets to fruition for them and everything. And yeah. uh, it goes from there for them, really. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, what's it like playing up in Cumbria when it's been raining and everything like that? Oh, is your... Worst, <laughs> one of the worst experiences I've ever had as a as a rugby player. Batley would have to be up there as well when it's you know, during winter. So Batley, Workington, Barrow and Whitehaven, I've, you know, I've been um, lucky enough to experience the winter games over there. And, um, uh, yeah, that, that'll be up there as, with one of the worst um, games I've ever played in um, condition-wise. Uh, Tash is asking, what's it like playing with Corey again after literally watching him grow up and be one? <laughs> Corey's my little bro, man. Um, it's, it's been awesome. Um, I'm quite close to Corey. Um, it's it's been really no, it's been good because I Corey used to babysit Phoenix when we first come get, came over here. So he used to be my babysitter. So he used to babysit Phoenix on tour. He turned 18 and we started going out together. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> You know, it was good because I was there when Corey made his debut um, with Sheffield and then obviously being able to play uh, for another three or four years and Corey being able to play in the team, um, you know, was, was awesome. But then to be able to come back and play with Sheffield together, um, you know, we spoke about it when he, when he, when he came over. Um, it was awesome. So I, I was lucky enough also to um, play with Corey at Cass. You know, I joined Cass when he was there as well. So, no, nah, it's, it's awesome to be able to play with Corey again. And, you know, I haven't got many years left in me. So, um, you know, just enjoy it as, you know, do as much as I can. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of the years left, I mean, what's the deal at the moment anyway? Because officially you're on loan from Keith Lee, but have we got you for the rest of the year? Because it started as a two-week deal and you're still here several months later. So is it just, uh, is it for the rest of the year and, and beyond? Yeah, I... I'd, I'd say it's for the rest of the year. Obviously, the, the contract doesn't, it just says like Keith Lee can take me back whenever they want, but um, they, don't, they don't need me. Um, you know, they're, they're doing awesome at the moment. They're flying. So, um, and said I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm pretty happy yeah. to stay at Sheffield. I'm really enjoying uh, my time there, um, being back with, you know, with, with Tubbs and all of that. And, and the playing groups um, are really awesome groups. So it's made it easier for me. So, you know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, Keith Lee are doing well, but, you know, I'll be happy just to finish off the year at Sheffield. What about yeah. next year? Well, <laughs> next year's another convo. <laughs> 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 I have to talk to Tubbs about that. You know how tight Tubbs is. Oh, so, dear. Um, well, no, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, if, if I was to continue playing for another year, um, ideally it would be um, with Sheffield, but, you know, rugby leagues are... And it's a funny business where we leave. Um, so um, I, I know um, they'll be looking to um, grow the squad and, you know, look for the future. And, you know, that's just part of rugby league. But we'll have to kind of see what, what happens in the next few weeks. Yeah. Richard Anderson says, give Q a five-year deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell Tom's that. Yeah. <laughs> five year deal. <laughs> I'll, I'll be. I'll, I'll be on thirty one in five yeah. years time. So, be sweet. Yeah. Uh, Tasha's Tasha's got quite a few questions there. She's gone crazy. Tash. Uh, Calm down, Tasha. Yeah. She goes. Uh, who do you get the most enjoyment from playing alongside? What with the current um, 
team or is this just... just in general just in general really when you felt comfortable like you most enjoyed it with uh, I think I just I think I'm I'm, I'm doing all right um, right now at Sheffield and, and and that's obviously got to do with how happy I am with the playing group um, you know that I play my best rugby when I'm kind of enjoying it and I'm enjoying the, the company of the team and everything's going well outside yeah. so um, obviously Corey's up there because um, I'm quite close to Corey and but um, just being able to play with um, you know some of the other my um, Samoan boys that are playing in the team Bailey who who came back from injury this week um, this week and then got sent off after 20 minutes yeah um, apparently, just uh, that was a <laughs> apparently that he, he he got sent off for like being on the end of somebody's punch to his yeah, head. Yeah, no, he does punch. Yeah, he didn't even connect. So that was that was yeah, that was bizarre. But I know that um, feeling. Well, you know, being able to play with um, Fax, um, you know, some of some of these boys who I've played against throughout my whole career, um, Joe Farrell, uh, Wellen, Bush on the wing. So, um, and it's it's good to see a lot of the young boys coming through. Um, Isaac was. Isaac Farrell, who was, um, you know, I thought he was playing really well until he got injured. Um, and then you got the um, Johnson, sorry, Brian Johnson, um, you know, who's, who I think he's got a lot of potential to um, be a great player. So, um, you know, it's, I guess it's just, it's, it's a really good mix. The group's a really good mix. You've got a good mix of experience and um, young boys and um, Dougie, I thought Dougie was 32 the other day, but he only told me he was like 23. So I um, walked around like he's an old man. Old man Douglas. But it's good. No, it's good. No, I'm, I'm just enjoying playing with the group that, that's there right now. So uh, we've got a, I think we've got a question from one of the ladies' team. Did you enjoy the chance to watch the ladies yesterday? Oh, I loved it. I, they really surprised me. Like, I don't, don't take offence to that, but... Um, I really loved the game. Um, it was physical. Um, they surprised me with their skill. Um, they, they really surprised me with the way they played as a team and um, how good they were. And um, we really enjoyed it. The, you know, that was the first time we got to sit down and actually watch the game properly as a team. And, um, you know, and if you ask, you know, any of the boys, you know, they, they, they'll say as well, they all really enjoyed it. So, um, um, I, I think moving forward, we'll try and get to, um, you know, to most of it, especially if they're playing before us, you know, I'd, I'd love just to be able to watch, you know, most of the games if they're playing Curler Razor to our games. Oh, yeah, there seems to be, uh, they're not doing too bad, actually. I mean, Molly last week when she was on, she was, uh, I mean, she's got a soft spot for Mizzy. She was saying about the reason why she wears number five is Mizzy. So, yeah, uh, Missy, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Missy, he's, um, <laughs> He's still going on. He's still going strong. Missy, I think he turns 50 next year, but he's still going strong. It starts yeah. with a four at the minute, but I'm not sure what the second digit is. But yeah, he's still... He's, yeah. It, it, well, he was injured. He, he hurt his arm, but I think he, I don't know if he's back playing yet. But yeah, yeah he's, he's back good. playing now. He's back killing it the way right. Missy does. Um, yeah. He just just he just he plays the game one way. That's, that's hard. You know, he's got no other way of playing the game. So he's always going to get broken bones and, and all of that, which... Where I try and um, I try and avoid all the tackles in that, so that's why I'm I'm still playing at my age. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, Richard Anderson's got to come away cracker. He says, "How did you feel about the move to the full time scene at the end of 2015? Was it an exciting time or disappointing to see the team break up?" No, it was ex it was an exciting time. Obviously, we had like a really good um, group before we went full time. Um, I think we lost about. I don't know, I'll, I'll top of my head, 12 or 12 or 13 players that um, were, a, you know, a good core of the group that were so successful when the first um, they introduced the middle eights. Uh, going into full time, um, even when we did lose all those players, it was quite an exciting time to go full time. But, you know, looking back, obviously, I think it was too early to go full time, um, which showed when, um, you know, we, we kind of struggled that season. You know, with, with the players that we had. Yeah, go on, Mark. I'll let you. I'll let you get a word in now. So <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm saying the question. <laughs> I was just going to say, do you? Do you? Obviously, of all the great games that you, you played for, us, like the grand finals and all that. Do you have a game that may not be one of those that is one of your favourites that you think 
that game was so memorable for many things. Do you have do you have any sort of any 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 sort of favorite game aside from the grand finals and things that you, you really enjoyed? Um the Wakefield game, the, the game where we played against Wakefield. If if, if we went, mind. yeah. Yeah, yeah so if we weren't gonna yeah. talk about the, the finals, I think yeah, the Wakefield game will be up there. Um um, you know, we were up against it against Super League team and um, just defensively, uh, I, if, if I can remember, I think they only scored one try against us in that game. And that'll be up there as um, outside of the grand final games, probably the um, one, uh, you know, one of the memorable ones outside. And that was yeah. a Bramall Lane as well. What was it like playing yeah. rugby there? Because, of course, that's a football ground normally. But um, oh, it was they, awesome. they, they, is it good there? Yeah, it was awesome. There, when, I, when I first came, um, when I first landed, Tubbs took me straight to the stadium to show me around at Bramall Lane, um, kind of showing off, you know, our, our stadium where I was going to play. And it was, um, you know, I was quite impressed. But I think we only played there for like one season before we moved back to Doncaster. But um, it was an awesome stadium. And that was quite, um, the, the fans were quite close to the action as well at Bramall, Bramall Lane. And it was, you know, they kept the, the, the pitch, um, you know, really good. So it was, it was an awesome um, playing pitch. Yeah, Bramall Lane's always been lucky for us over, over the years, everywhere from even when we're back to the 80s, because when I can remember. But it always yeah. seemed that like Bramall Lane seemed to be one of the fa- one of the favourite places yeah, people well, used yeah. to play. So Yeah, it's, uh, it was one of my favourites. <laughs> yeah, me, both me, me and Mark are Sheffield Wednesday fans, so we don't talk highly about that stadium. <laughs> <laughs> we went there to watch them. We went there to watch Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We went there to watch so, are, you, are you coming to any of the World Cup games later in the year? Because we've got one at Bramall Lane. So are you going to come along? Yeah, yeah, I'll try. I'll try to come along. Um, I'm, I'm trying to go back home when the season finishes. Um, I haven't been home in about four or five years. Um, wow. I've, obviously, I've got a new... A newborn who's just um she's just turned one so um you know i, I want to take her home and meet you know the family so hopefully if we do go home i'll be able to come back in time for the world cup um we're joined by mr mark Aston himself who's hiding behind his wife's profile of course that's what he does yeah he's not here we go. enough to speak here, from here we go he says do you dye your hair this is coming from him this is mr mark Aston. Here. this is coming <laughs> from him <laughs> What he said? What he say? Do you dye your hair? No, no. I, if you can see, <laughs> I keep it natural. I got enough. I know. I keep it natural. Yeah. Gray. I wanna. I'm going for the gray look. So oh. I don't dye it. I just cut it. I just you know it's, just cut it. It's the one thing I've always said to him. I said, you see, Dowell Powell, who you played with all them years, and he's coaching, and he's the silver fox. And you look yeah, at yeah. you, and look at the difference. And who's had more stress in his life in coaching than anybody except Mark? <laughs> it's not. It's not possible. It's just not possible. Yeah, I think. I think Mark's. Uh, I think Toby's secretly gone and um, had a hair transplant, but he went and <laughs> he, he, he went and got his teeth done, and he went and got a hair transplant, but oh. he won't admit oh. it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Simon Travis asks, out of all the positions you've played with, which is the one you like the most? Positions are. Oh. Oh, fullback, definitely fullback. Um, just gives me, you know, um, freedom to roam around, um, come back, come into the, the attacking line whenever I want. Um, and um, most importantly, not make as many tackles as if I was playing in the halves. Yeah. The, um, how did it feel with the, the shirt presentation when you, all your family came into the, to, to the changing room and everything presented you with your shirt? How did that feel? Oh. Oh, I think if, if you watch the video, um, I got quite emotional um, with the whole, um, you know, with, with everything that was going on. Um, I think that's, you know, massive to credit, massive credit to, to Tubbs and, and the club for doing that. Um, you know, I, I thanked them afterwards. You know, I was, I was really grateful for what, what they did in um, making it such a big occasion for me because to play 200 games for such a, you know, such a great club, um, you know, um, um, you know, I, I feel quite honoured um, to do so, and for them to make it such a big occasion. Um, if yeah, if you see the video, I become I was really emotional before for the game because they yeah. they brought my family in, and um, obviously my son spoke. And but I, as soon as I saw them come in, um, that was me gone. I yeah. started crying <laughs> straight away. So yeah, um, Mark just yeah, it was uh, awesome. yeah, Mark just put it in saying you was crying and everything. So. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, when, when we got, I yeah. think I don't, if no. you're any, 
if any Sheffield Eagles fans watch that video, I'm sure we were all emotional with you just the same. Which is an amazing achievement yeah. and everything. So to get that, so uh, Mark's yeah. listening. Uh, Tubby's yeah, listening. I think I'm. I think I'm like one. I think I'm like ninth. Ninth. All oh, right. You think you're ninth? Yeah, I think I'm like uh, ninth. The ninth player to um, reach 200 games for the Eagles. I think Tubbs is there. Tubbs, Daryl Powell, um, Mark Gamson. Uh, hold on, uh, Paul Broadbent, uh, Carlson, hold on. Menzi, So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if Tubby's still listening, we need you to stay because he can't be too far off Menzies' try record. So, keep no, going. no, he'll, keep, he'll, going. He'll keep going. Well, what's Menzies' try record? What's oh, Menzies? I mean, is it? Have you got, have you got it's up. about 160, isn't it? And I know QA is oh. on about 125. Give me so a sec here, we'll find out. Oh, wow, yeah, need to, yeah. For anybody who wants to know, maybe he's coming on the show. I saw him in Tubbs. Elsewhere. I did ask him, but I don't know what he said. Tom's so. too tight. He's... <laughs> <laughs> Tom's too tight. You're kidding me. Oh, No one ever knows what he's saying. No. He only no. talks proper English when he's had a drink. Always no, on TV. He's drink, always he's... on TV. The funniest oh, yeah, thing... On I... TV. The... The funniest thing I remember seeing with Tubbs is there was a TV show called Rugby League Bat Chat, uh, Bat Chat on Free Sports once a week. And one week they had a chat with John Keir and Mark. And the first thing that the presenter and John Keir noticed was how good Mark Aston had got a suntan in the middle of lockdown in Sheffield. And he just said, where have you been? Where have you been for this? And then he goes, oh, it's hard work. And he went, shut up. Absolutely shut <laughs> up. But that's the funniest bit I remember on TV with Mark with that. Yeah. Everybody, they're not giving back the rugby. It was all about the suntan. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm looking to get records here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Premiership. Oh, come on. Uh, no, no, can't do it. I'm, I'll find players, don't we? I'll get him. Yeah, yeah, we'll... yeah right, definitely. Can't be, can't be far away because, you know. Yeah. You have to be wide. We'll do it. Yeah. Apparently to this, is, uh, well, according to the Rugby League Project, Men's has only scored 72 tries. Well, that's not right. Oh, well, that's, not... that's probably that's in one right. season, that. In one season, yeah, yeah. I was about to say he scored 42 in one season, so it can't be right. Yeah, what's the most you scored in the season? I think it was 35 or 36. It was the same season, Menzi scored 41. I scored 35. Oh, dear, and if you ask Menzi, I set up most of those tries, I set most of those tries up for him. So, <laughs> special times, they were very special times. Yeah. I mean, how was it for you, Mark? I mean, you were watching QLT and everything like that at that time. I mean, how was uh, it for you? It was so great because what, what I loved about those teams, apart from the obvious brilliance and ability, was the fact that you all had the belief and the trust that you were going to be there. The example I'll give you is that try in the, uh, in the final that you finished off. The belief to know that your man's there when you make the pass without having to look and the trust that you must have all had in each other, that is what made it so special. There's times when we turn up to games thinking, well, we're going to win, but how many are we going to get? And I, obviously, they're, they're, they're great times, but it must have been so enjoyable to play, you know, in teams like that where you would just have the freedom. Because I don't know how many times you did this, but you'd catch the ball from fullback and we're like, off he goes, and you'd find a gap, you'd be through, and you'd either finish it yourself or someone would be with you. Mm. You know, it must have been such an experience there. No, yeah, it was. Um, and those... Those were like one of the best times of um, you know my rugby career, and you um, you touched on like the belief and the trust. Like we had a really tight group back then. Um, you know, a lot of rugby league teams say they come from a tight group, but we actually we had a really tight group. And if you go through the the budget of the teams back in the day, well, you know you know how tight Tubbs is. We had a, like a low budget um, playing group, and yeah. and the reason why we we're so successful is the the belief we had for each other and how close we were and and um you know and it showed in the 2012 2013 um seasons where you know we went back to back so um those were really you know awesome years but you know not not to say that the other years I've spent at Sheffield weren't you know as good but um it was just just special that we were able to um, go through and win win the competition in those years yeah well, the, you are a record holder with Sheffield Eagles because according to Wikipedia, sir, you hold the record for the most tries in the game with Menzi and Davil Powell when you scored five against Rochdale Hornets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. 
And Menzies yeah. scored 195. So okay. he's on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what am I on? What did you know? What I'm on? I think you're on about 140 from memory. It was 125 oh, through the time round, and I think it's 15 yeah. this time or something. So. Um, I think I think it, well, according to Wikipedia, it says it says here you've scored 183 tries. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah I that's I right or not? Well, <laughs> Dick, Dick, Dick Pepper will know. Surely we need to. Uh, yeah, we need to, we need to get yeah, this done. Yeah, yeah. Um, he'll know definitely, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, somebody's got to beat these try records because Devil's been in that thing now since 1989, and I remember that match, so uh, yeah, uh, he never stopped talking about it for weeks doing the schools in when Mark Aston. <laughs> oh, Mark Aston yeah. as a schools coach was something I will always hold very, very funny. Yeah, uh, used to do his sandwiches <laughs> every time, he still, he was still lazy then. He never go to the sandwich shop. It would always me that had to go to the sandwich shop for him. He would never go. Him and his Rover <laughs> car, in his favourite Rover car that he had. I remember. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mark Aston drove a Rover. He thought it was cool. Yeah. Did he? Uh, um, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, Mrs. Shepherd Eagles herself. Kate, Katie saying, when will Phoenix be playing for us? Have a word, Q. Yeah, I know. Um, well, it's father and the, son the only game. bad thing about Phoenix <laughs> playing fullback is I play fullback as well. So, um, <laughs> you know, can't, <laughs> can't knock off the master, <laughs> the apprentice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just that we were saying over the weeks, I mean, me and uh, we've just been saying about um, how many people could do a father versus son game with Sheffield Eagles at this moment. It, it'd be hilarious to watch all fathers take on the sons in just this big <laughs> game. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, hopefully um, we'll see what happens. Like I, I think that's that's one of my goals, though. I want to play at least one more game with with Phoenix um, before I retire. So um, yeah. you know, never know if oh. Tubbs gets you know gets his wallet out and um, signs me. He might you know come on loan next year. Yeah, do you hear that Tubbs? Come on, sign this ball. Come on, let's get twenty twenty three sorted sorted out. Please, your reg going on with all okay, uh... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Joe Reg, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I mean, Phoenix, I mean, with Tony Smith and everything, and everything that went off okay with Phoenix, was it all right with the the business with Tony Smith? Was it just no? He was fine. He was, yeah. um, you know, it's just, um, yeah, he, he was, he was fine with it. Um, I guess just being a young player that's only just just started wouldn't have affected him as much as the the senior boys who have been with Tony Smith um, for a number of years. Yeah. But um, yeah, he, I think it was just you know work as usual. He just goes yeah. to training and just um, uh, Danny Maguire took over, and it was just um, you know another day to get better. Yeah, Katie's but Katie's in the groove, Mark. Here we go. She's in the groove now. It always happens when we get a player on. Always happens. <laughs> Who's the best player you've played alongside? Oh, alongside. So I was quite fortunate. <laughs> To be, um, you know, to start my career and play with a few of the Melbourne Storm players. Um, I played with um, Greg Inglis when he was coming through. Um, he, he'll be up there um, as one of the best players I played with. But when you talk about the biggest hitter, Menzi, Menzi on his day, I think could take, you know, could take anyone on Menzi Yeri on his day. Um, you know, he's the biggest hitter I've ever played with, I've ever, I've ever seen, and. You know, when he was on, when he was on, um, you know, not many players could, um, you know, could handle him. Yeah. Daniel Burt's asking, what needs to be done to get you a testimonial year? <laughs> oh, I know. Um, I think I'm close to um, applying for one. So I guess whoever I talk to um, about next year, um, I kind of, um, you know, kind of put that in and see if I can get like a testimonial um, yeah, for, for next year. So, Tubbs, again, get your wallet out, Tubbs. Come on, Tubbs, give him a testimonial. Um, <laughs> always says he's got Apple PayPal. He says, yeah, he says he's got Apple PayPal, which I think that's his payment <laughs> methods. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Kevin Whitehouse, this is a good one. Um, what was it like playing in the Challenge Cup quarter final against London in 2013? Did the team fancy us beating them? Did, did the Eagles fancy beating London in that quarter final against London? Yeah, I, um, I guess that's. I think that's that's another game. Um, you know, when 
Mark spoke about um, what are the games outside of the grand final that you you know you consider um, memorable. I think that's another game that's up there with um, playing against Wakefield. And I think we kind of blew our chances. We we didn't play too well that game, and we kind of fancied um, ourselves beating London Broncos because of you know how good we were playing during the year and um, how good of a group we had that year. But um, I just remember. Um, the game, it kind of we we kind of let it slip away, and uh, I think we were um, quite overall of the occasion. It was quite a big occasion for us, and um, we didn't handle it well, in my opinion. So um, even though we, you know, we lost, it was it was um, you know a memorable game, and it was um, I can still remember the build up to it um, was quite awesome. But um, yeah, it would have been good to to get the win and go into the semis. Yeah. Katie says you'll be long retired before Tubby gets his wallet out. Wallet out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't think that will ever happen. Yeah, yeah. Wait till the end of season, do we had the shock of the lifetime last year? I mean, I mean, it was nice because when all of a sudden there's been a thousand pounds put behind the bar, you couldn't get to the bar without the Sheffield Eagles players that night. <laughs> they were not from flying. Tubbs, though, eh? yeah. <laughs> not from Tubbs. Tubbs didn't put me on the bar. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chris Fowler saying Scott Turner had a try disallowed. That was good. Would that have, would that have put us in front? Jamie Sauer beat us the night, beat us that night. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it, it would have helped with the momentum. Um, you know that. Um, it's Scott Turner's try. Um, if it was allowed, yeah. you know that could have swung the game in our favour. So you just never know. Um, you know with the game of rugby league, but I just remember Jamie Sauer there. He, yeah. He absolutely carved us. So, um, yeah. can I just if say, if he wasn't playing, then maybe we, we would have won. Yeah, can I just say, your Castleford shirt gets put on rugby league buy sell swap on Facebook about once a month. That's everybody, it. every time, every time you see it, there's yours and there's Corey's uh, uh, Castleford shirts always come up and people buy them and then they put them back on a few weeks later. So, as yeah. I was saying, as soon as it's back on next time, I went, I'm having it. I'm having that one. <laughs> so every, it's, every, every so often we see him, it's like all the ex-Eagles players in the world, they call it like Eric, Eddie Batty's and all that. He's all coming yeah, up yeah. and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, it was always there on Facebook. You wouldn't believe how many player shirts get put on, on Facebook. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, I was going to oh, look at your T-shirt again. There it is. Every single, every few weeks, it's the same shirt. I think... Is it the one where the name is spelled? Is it the one where the name spelled wrong? No, it's, I, I don't know. Oh well, I've got one of them. Uh, but uh, I think it's—I think it spoke correctly, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's one of the, definitely one of the cast. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah, I didn't know there was one where my name was spelled wrong. Because usually I'm I'm quick to get it corrected. Ooh, Kitman's. You know, I bet you were Kitman's nightmare, weren't it? Sometimes. Yeah, I know. Brian <laughs> loves me. <laughs> Brian loves me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think I think everybody should put Brian in the Hall of Fame. The amount of work he's put right, yeah, in the year with, with the Kitman side oh, yeah. of things. Uh, no, he needs yeah. he needs to be up there soon. Oh. How did it feel against Witness that first home game when uh, it was Premier Sports Night and everything at the OLP that first night? Well, it was it was an awesome feeling. Um, I I just know that um you know Tubbs has put a lot of work into to trying to get you know the Sheffield um you know Sheffield was based back in Sheffield and um you know I, I I was I was involved when we started you know trying to get back I when I was at Sheffield we were playing at Doncaster um one of those years and then when I left they started playing at Wakefield and you know kind of went back to Doncaster so I, I kind of knew um you know what he had what he had been through and you know um kind of seeing all his hard work pay off and um, you know, it was, it was it was great to be able to play, you know, the first game back at, at Sheffield, being, you know, a Sheffield person myself. So it was awesome to be to be able to play that first game back. Yeah, I must admit, when you... Go on, Mark, sorry. No, I was going to say, I can't... <clears throat> stop me if I'm wrong here, but did, did you play against us when you had your spell with Toronto? Yeah. Yeah, I, that was like what was that? Oh like? yeah, I played at I played at Olympic Park Stadium. Yeah, that's right. Um, that was so I signed for Toronto, and um, I think it was the middle of the year. We 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 had a game back at um Olympic Park Stadium. So um, yeah, that was that was my first game against Sheffield when when I when I left. 
bit of difference now, isn't it? A bit of, <laughs> a bit of difference from then till now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Porter cabins well, for toilets. The, the fans. <laughs> yeah, I <know>. <laughs> <laughs> what I can say is, like, I just remember that game, uh, my first game back um, against Sheffield. The fans were awesome. Um, you know, they they still cheered for me as if I was playing for Sheffield, and you know, it was um, it made it quite easy for me. So well, the fans were, were awesome still, yeah. even though I was playing for Toronto. Yeah. Um, Simon Travis asks, who showed you your famous sidestep? Oh, <laughs> man, it's just something I just practiced as a kid. I guess um, that's when I was growing up. Um, or when I when I was playing, you, the, the likes of Benji Marshall and that stepped into the scene, and you know Billy Slater had a bit of a step, and you know you just practice it. You know that's that's one of the things you you you, you want as a kid to you know to have in your your arsenal and. You know, I just kept practicing it, and that uh, I guess I'm, I'm known now for for my footwork, and that's something um I've passed down to to my son, who's got my son's got a bit of footwork than me, and uh, he plays the game a lot harder than me. So hopefully, um, he goes uh you know further than I did. The big question about Phoenix is uh, when his time comes, will he be playing for England? Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think he's already told me this. Uh, he's already told me. I think Sam was. The number one um, for him, um, playing for Samoa. But if if he was able to play for any of the the big countries, because he's he's eligible to play for Australia, New Zealand, and England. I think um, New Zealand. I mean, England is is who he wants to play for. He's English, you know. All he knows is um, is England. He came over when he was six, and um, he pretty much grew up here. So, um, you know, he's already told me if he doesn't play for Samoa, then England's um, number two. Amazing, wonderful, wonderful. Katie Peace asking, What is it you're doing with those other two players? I do not know what she's on about. What is this? What What is it that you're doing with those other two players? What, what, I ain't got a clue. No, no, no. Sure. <laughs> Katie and Katie, beyond that. yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get an essay in about a minute now. You watch it with all that rest of it. Um. <clears throat> This has been oh wonderful. This has been wonderful. We've been saying to each other for ages, we've got to get Q on. The moment you signed this year, I think me and Mark, we both went, he's back, he's back. We just lost our minds. <laughs> we were just absolutely going. You, uh, you keep posting things like talks. Oh, dear. Oh, whatever she's on about. I think it might be on with post with social media or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean talk? I think she's talking about talk, talk your walk. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, so it's it's something that I started with three other players, um, Jesse Sinalafo, Peter Matautia, and Swaya Matangi, um, and it's it's all about just trying to uh, raise the awareness about um, mental health and uh, well being, while also um, talking about resilience and mind and and our mindset. So it's something that we want to try and um, you know create. Um, in the rugby community and something we started, um, you know, quite a few months ago who, you know, I think we're, we're going to have a bit of uh, more information come out soon um, about, you know, um, where we're going with it and, and you know, we're, we're trying to get into schools to to teach the kids about, um, you know, mindset and mental health and and just try and um, create and make an impact. Yeah. Um, this is a fun course, yeah. yeah. That's a mate, that's an amazing course. It's, it's, it's yeah. one uh, that's one of the best ones I've heard. There's always something that rugby league players don't get the respect or the, the acknowledgement of what they do away from the game and everything like that. And it's it's wonderful to see. It is, it's so nice. Uh, oh, this is mm-hmm. this is a funny question. I hope you can answer this one. Tasha yeah. Burt, Tasha is asking, can you can we relive? The presentation dance from a presentation night a few years ago, please. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I know. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was I amazing. must have missed something here. I've missed something here. Oh, it was a treat. Nah, it was a treat. Yeah, no, nah, that was good. That was a good presentation night. Um, we did a dance with the boys I was um, I was close to. So when I first came over to Sheffield, um, I stayed in Hillsborough. And there was a, f- a few of the other boys stayed in Hillsborough as well. Um, Misty Tolpapa, Dane McDonald, um, Tim Bergen, Alex Shostak, 
Um, and we, we ended up doing a, a dance for presentation night. Um, and, it, you know, um, everyone loved it. Eh? And I totally forgot about that. <laughs> and if you see the footage, you can hear Tash just, you know, laughing the whole way um, when she was filming it because she was one of the ones that were filming it. So, um, no, nah, I, I don't think, I can't remember. I won't be able to remember the, yeah. the moves in that. So you might have to ask Missy. Missy will probably remember it. Well, he sure still does it now. Footage, so expect that to appear online shortly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Those are well, good times. Oh, well, this has been a wonderful night. Um, oh, she says she's sure she's got a video somewhere. <laughs> oh hell video phones are this curse of the world um this has been on one of the nights we'll always remember it's it's, it's one of the highlights for me and for mark and for both of us it's been thank you so so much for this um oh katie's pretty nah, a good story she just said i've nearly got i nearly got arrested because of tim i invaded the pitch at warrington and i was trying to and as i was trying to get to tim she nearly got arrested by a warrington things of something like that <laughs> typical kate yeah. it's yeah. typical <laughs> It's typical Kate. If anybody's in an Eagles kit and everything like that, she goes after him. Even after all these years, and I remember him very, very well. Uh, yeah. Don't ever, I've, don't ever say anything bad against an Eagles player when Kate's in the in the in the stadium. I know yeah, that nah, very she's, well. Yeah. She's crazy, but she's what she's. Nah, at least she's always she's always got our back, so it's good. Absolutely. It's good to know we have one of those fans yeah. who's always got our Absolutely. back. Absolutely, yeah. She looked great on the Premier Sports things with all the with the old eighties jumper on as well. So yeah, <laughs> but thanks ever so much, man. Thank you so much. All the very best for the summer bash of this week at Edinley in the new no, green no. kit. Yeah, no, yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me. I like I apologize uh, before because uh, you reached out to me quite early and oh, I, I didn't that, see though. it till till later. <laughs> oh, so um... Mark's got a quick question. He says, "What's your favorite kit? You've won." Oh, favorite kit. Um, I think it would have to be the. The green kit where um, Missy designed. He's got um, it there. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Look, there he is. Yeah. I've got it. I've yeah, got it. It's actually, be... it's actually Scott Turner's Turner. shirt. But, um, <laughs> I'll find it for you here. The uh, Missy designed there, this, didn't yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the, Missy uh... designed that pattern. Um, so I think that'll be, my, yeah, that'll be, I feel, one of my favourite oh. kits. Yeah. Forgive us if we're being impolite or anything, but what actually is it meant to be? Do you know? Is it? Oh, it's something, it's something that, um, means something to you know missy's family and um oh, a bit really? of it yeah a bit of it's got to do with um our culture but yeah to um yeah to be able to like you know tubbs has been awesome so he was he's the one that come off the idea and he's the one that told missy to yeah. kind of design design something where it can come on you know get, go on the plane kit and i think uh, yeah i think that that's probably pretty much like the, the best kit uh, for me um, I'll show you this. I'll just quickly show you this. This is somewhat off topic, but I'll just quickly show you. This was a present we got. You know, the uncle I mentioned in Australia. They went yes. to Samoa we on holiday about 10 years ago. Uh, and we and we got this as a wedding present um, from the <laughs> with the names on the back. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a statue, but it's absolutely brilliant. And it's still it's still here. I mean, what it's, it just looks like the South Sea Island. It just looks like an incredible culture. And... You know, if it weren't too far away, I'm, I'd, I'd love to visit, you know, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga. I'd, I'd, I'd love to go. Oh, you'll, I think you'll love it. Um, we're, we're quite welcoming as, as people. Um, you know, we're, we're passionate about our culture. Um, you know, we, we love to, to sing, we love to dance, and we love to show off our culture. So, and we're really um, respectful as, you know, as a nation. And, you know, we're all about having fun as well. So, um, I think you, you'll enjoy it if you're able to... You know, to go over there and experience it. <laughs> go on, Mark. You know you want to. You know you're going to. <clears throat> what? <laughs> you know you go over there at some point. You know you'll go. Well, I'm not to be the one of the world I've not yet seen, so it's it's, uh, it's there. Well, the, well, thank you very much again, mate. All we, all everything goes well at the summer bash on Saturday. Uh, we really do. Hope that we uh. We owe London one. We owe London a big we one. Owe, we owe, oh, we owe yeah, London a big yeah. one. We owe them a second half. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, thank you very very much love to all of your family and everybody thank you so so much uh, and, uh, thanks for having me it's and been we'll, a pleasure thank you thank you and we'll see you at the end of season though and all the home games as well you take care my man yeah, thank we'll you do, so we'll much do. catch up for thank a beer thank take you. care bye bye thank you very thank much you. All right. bye 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 well we Go want 10, 10 minutes
Yeah, I've got to, yeah, very simply, we've, we've got to talk about yesterday's massive result, 64-6. Thanks, sc- yeah. thanks, thanks, scoring four. Um, performance galore. You did, you did an interview with somebody for Pine, but he's doing it at Sheffield Eagles and he had to leave because oh, of his train. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll just briefly touch on that. It, it was a fellow who, Daniel, he reached out on the group page and said, would any fans like to talk to me? So I just said, yeah, absolutely. I'm always up to something like that. You know, those who know me know I can talk. So, um, and uh, yeah, he came to the game. He's actually a football ground hopper that's really into his rugby league as well. He's a Wigan fan. Um, and he's uh, he's done a book, which we'll plug when I've got a copy of it. Um, I have invited him on the show as well, Dino. So yep. about his adventures. If you're welcome, you know, he, he, he says he'd be delighted to come on. We'll, we'll organise yep. it. Um, and uh, he's doing another book about uh, rugby league ground hopping. And obviously, LOP being a new ground, he, he wanted to come over. But yeah, he lives in Cleethorpe, so he had to he had to leave on about 50, 60 minutes to get his train back from Meadowall. But it's just the unfortunateness with the game yeah. being delayed yesterday. A lot of people with either free book trains or things that were going on it couldn't stay to the end, which was a real shame, but understandable yeah. given uh, yeah. you know given the delay, which frankly no one could help. No, uh, from what I understand, no one no. could help it. But um, but kudos must go to absolutely everybody at the club, Mr. Anigan, Tash. Yeah. Uh, Tubby as well. Obviously, the players keeping them motivated with the delay. Um, excuse me. Obviously, being. I think the main thing is the communication. Being completely honest, just every so every so often saying it's looking like one, it's looking like half, it's looking like And also, the good thing is, unlike tram lines, if we wanted to nip out, go to the pub, go to the shop, or whatever, you were allowed to go out. They branded you, then you could just come straight back in. Right. You know, well, well done, well done all round for for yeah. organising that so well. Right. And performance of the weekend. And we put this on the Rugby Football League and they've done that and they, they should get the performance of the weekend. The wonderful the wonderful women's team. They did it again. They beat Swinton. They they was up at they the team that they they lost to early in the season, they've rectified it now. So come on, ladies, well done. What a performance. It's absolutely main magic. And that picture that I put on the page and that was up there. That's magical to have the men's and the ladies team all together in one pitch. That in picture, that was fantastic. Um, it, was brilliant. it was it was brilliant to see, and uh, I did speak to a few of them afterwards. You know, Pete uh, Caps came over and said hello to me as well. Brilliant to meet you. You know, you're, you're welcome on here anytime. And everybody was just so everybody was smiling at the end of that game. The fans, the, the players, the women, everybody was smiling. Uh, yeah. We gave the referee some beef, not because he had a bad game, he had a, a fine game, but he was wearing a GoPro on his head and he was live streaming the game and he, as he was refereeing it. So uh, we were like, um, you know, is he covering up your ball patch and all that sort of thing? But the ref took it in good spirit and it was all yeah. good fun. Um, yeah. what, what, what completely incredible progress these ladies are making. Uh, you know, we, we, we can't put Andrea over enough, uh, who's done marvels with yeah. the with the women's team. I know she's going to be going off on maternity soon and we wish you yeah. very well with that. Um, the, um, you know, to, to go, when I was doing that interview with Daniel yesterday, I said, and he's like, oh, um, have you had a women's team for long? I'm like, no, we had not until March or whatever it was. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, literally, we start the women's team. These are the women that are playing and they've lost one game all season. Mm-hmm. And he's like, wow, what progress. So it just gets better and better for him, doesn't it? Yeah, don't worry, Molly. Your your video will be going on YouTube soon. I've just got to work out how to download it from Facebook. I forgot to record it, so <laughs> I've got to uh, get that onto YouTube. Oh, I see the hamster on the wheel. Just, just for you. Um, very simply, this weekend it's the one that we owe them. It's like Q says, we owe them a second half. We owe them big. We don't need motivation. It's there. Oh. It's all in front of us. I mean, the only sad thing about yesterday is Bailey's uh, getting sent off for being on receiving end of a punch. Oh. And the, thing is, the thing is, when that goes to disciplinary, he's already had a red card this season, so they're going to take a dim view of that, unfortunately, just, just because of that. He got sent off at North Wales as well, and I'm still not entirely sure what that was for. But um, if Bailey could have a run in the team, you know, it, it, it'd be it very good in the second yeah. row, especially. Um, yeah. And then uh, it's the one, it's next week is, this week is the one where we're playing three games in a week. It's we've got London Saturday, uh, Bartley Wednesday, next yep. Wednesday, and then we were, yeah, got, yeah. and then we've got them again. So looking back on July, it's been very, very mixed, but it's a nice way to finish July. The fact that uh, we've got the summer bash, but we've got Workington. It didn't start the best with the London game. Uh, but the impro- the progress has been improving and everything like that. And it's like Tub said on the YouTube, confidence is a great thing. 
even with the match being delayed and the atrocious journey that Workington had to put, so a win's a win. We'll take the win no matter what. Yeah, so, I mean, kudos to Workington. They could have very easily turned around halfway down and said, no, we'll forfeit. Mm. They came down, they played the game, and their, mm. their fans were, you know, were like, um, yeah. obviously they're used to getting, it's not been, the, it's been a bad season for them. They're getting beatings, but they're still yeah. looking out there with the red zelled eye. And hopefully, I mean, they're going down. Let's look, if we have a look at the league table, I mean, Workington regretfully are going down. They've won one game out of 20. To stay up, they need to win at least five. It, it ain't going to happen. So yeah. we, we've got that. And London, yeah. speaking of London, they had a very eye-opening win yesterday against Halifax, who, who'd won something like 10 in a row. Yeah. And then London probably stopped them in did the you, uh Did you see who played for Halifax yesterday? He's back Brad. ahead. Uh, Brad. Brad's pl- Brad Knowles played. Yeah. How the hell has he made a comeback so soon? It's he's, Brad, not- he's not. He's, he doesn't operate like other humans do. To be back playing this season at all, never mind in the champ, is just incredible. Yeah, so- he, was, he was back yesterday, so... Um, Marx has put in another double header with the women in the couple, in the next home game. The Whitehaven game is going to be a double header uh, Ooh, against see. Whitehaven. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. The women are going to play at half twelve, and then we should be playing at three. So yeah, again, if, I'll just repeat what I said. Get yourselves there. Is there another it, ticket offer? I, I don't know, but if this train's running and I can pull it off, I'll come up for with Whitehaven game because since the trains have put me down for the bloody. Uh, Lady Summer Bash, they've ruined that one for me. I owe, I'm order, I, I owe another home game at least. So I might be up for the Whitehaven one. Sweet. I, I think last time I saw Whitehaven play it was 88, 89. <laughs> Probably no better. I don't I don't think the ground, I don't yeah. think their stadium's improved at all. It's the same bad. deal. It's the same um, deal. Marks has said yes, it'll be the same deal. Ten, ten quid. Well, well done. Well done. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, but uh, yes, and you will have to wear this shirt again. If anybody sees this gentleman wear another Eagle shirt except this at a game, you've got my permission to say, oh, to get it off his back and make sure he's got this one on. He's right. worn this one twice now and they've won both times. Dino, this rule applies to home games, not away games. I've got another shirt lined up for the bash, right? Because we're all, we're all going a bit different, but that will be home games. Oh, dear. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not. If I, if I, I don't know what, but for some reason, when you wash it, it takes ages to dry for some reason. But <laughs> oh, this is going to be, as soon as I've took this one off, it's going to be hung up in the wardrobe oh, again I anyway. Wear, I, don't want to wear it, I don't want to wear it too much because obviously, we've been a player's one, the knuckles will start falling off. And I, I oh, don't yeah, want yeah. That. I want it to look good, yeah. I, I need to I'm... get people to sign it. I've got Damien Gibson's from that year. If yeah. anybody's in touch with, with Damien, um, I, I'd love to meet up and get him get it signed. Yeah. I know he's. I know he's still. I think he lives in Leeds. Funnily enough, he might be there this weekend. Who knows? Yeah, never know. I get it. Uh, but yeah, I think I think because it's stretching, it's the <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. Uh, but uh, no, thank you very much to everybody for the wonderful messages you've been sending us. The wonderful things you've been telling us all about it. When you're coming up to both of us at games and saying how much you love the show, it just makes us feel a million million. But it makes it all worthwhile. It does. It makes it all worth. Every time I'm paying for Zoom or like that, it makes it all worthwhile. And this 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 show means the world to me, and it means the world to this gentleman as well. Since he's come on board, it's been phenomenal. It's been absolutely phenomenal. And getting QLT on and getting all the other guys on we've had, it's been wonderful, wonderful. And I can't wait to finish the season strong and see if we can get special guests on every single week now to the end of the season, which will be great. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to try and speak, if I can, to Mark Ward, who's uh, in charge of the LD team, mm. and see if he'll agree to come on and tell us about the plans for the LD team, who are brilliant. Yeah. Uh, little story. You know Leighton, who knows me very well. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, a couple of the girls' team yesterday, that's girls, sorry, the women's team yesterday, uh, or a couple of people who we didn't know went up to him yesterday and said, oh, you're Leighton, who plays for the LD team. And he, and he got properly freaked out by it. Brilliant. He didn't know what He's becoming a little celebrity. Well, he's not little anymore. He's like sixteen, but he's becoming a he's becoming a mini eagle celebrity now. And oh, the pride on his face when he wears that yeah. shirt. He does. Like all of them, when they put that shirt on, one thing I think the club has hit the bullseye with this year is the men's, the women's, and the LD, and everybody all wear the same kit. Mark yeah, Annigan and the spot. Yeah. It's like Mark Annigan and the sponsor said that when he came on. That's yeah. a big, big thanks to everybody for that. That's a wonderful thing to pull that off. I don't think other teams are there. Everything's the same. It looks phenomenal. It absolutely looks amazing. Yeah. And I don't think there's too many teams like that. Quickly, before we go, are we, are we playing Wakefield next season? Yes or no? Yes. 
<laughs> yes. I've seen the, reason, the reason being Toulouse are improving. Toulouse are improving a great deal. Yes. As they on. Somebody made an interesting point. Warrington could get dragged into some trouble here. They're only four points above. There's, there's Wakefield and Toulouse both on 10. Warrington's on 14. Wouldn't that be something? Oof. I can't see it. it. It take a freak, but they're, they're not doing all. They're not. They're not playing well. Something's going really, really wrong at Warrington. Well, Something it's the is re- syndrome, isn't it? You know, another player, another co- when you've had a coach somewhere for so long, replacing them is nearly impossible. I mean, look at Fergie at Man U, Wenger at Arsenal, and obviously we've got Aston, Aston at Arsenal Eagles. As well. Aston, well, he'll never go. He's only going in a <laughs> Um But obviously. Warrington had, um, yeah, uh, I forgot who it were. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know you're on a bat. Yeah, Tony Smith for years, and then they changed it to another one. Yeah, and Castleford at same after Darrell left. They've yeah. obviously they're picking up now. A great result yesterday, but they had a spell where it it, it, it dropped a little bit. It's the same whenever yeah. you change your, your coach after you've had a coach for yeah. so long. We'll ask Darrell when he comes on. I'm not talking to him yet. I'm just waiting for the season to finish and then off season. Then we're going to do a special one with off season. So, oh, to, to, in direct answer to your question, Wakefield are coming down. Yeah. Uh, I think Dewsbury and Workington are going down from ours, thankfully. Um, they and, drew. Dewsbury drew with Newcastle. Well, it's it's only a point, but they've the league table is Workington at two. They're probably gone. Dewsbury's now got five points, but Whitehaven's got nine. Yeah. So Dewsbury would need two and a half more wins yeah. uh, to escape. Um, if you ask me, I think they're the two that are going because Whitehaven are capable of a result at home against teams around them. Um, and then above that, you've got London seems to have London seem to have pulled off a minor miracle here because we were saying, you know, halfway not halfway through the season, but only only six, seven games ago, before yeah. we played them, we were saying they were they were looking in big trouble. And yeah. they've wow, what a what a turnaround for them. It must change a coach. It's just a change of coach, and this guy's come in and he's done and he's Pulled the strings and everything, so it's, he's done it. Sometimes he, that's all it takes. Yeah, but he won't pull them this weekend. We owe him one. We are gonna the, the lads. If any, oh, there's no motivation. There, yeah, you know, and we're in green. And we're in his green kit. We owe them this. We owe them this for what happened. Yeah, yeah we're in the green kit this week as well. We are, yeah, and it's uh, it's looking good. Yeah, yeah. Woo-hoo. Green kit, new kit, new kit for yeah, Sheffield Eagles. Also, we're gonna wear it for some other games as well. Mister Anigan yeah. said, I think we're gonna wear it for other games also. So. Yeah, yeah, getting there. But uh, many, many, many thanks to everybody for tonight. We're gonna let everybody get out of here now. We've done a, we've done this usual hour. We've done the hour on Mondays or yeah. whenever it is. Yes. Um, we'll let everybody know next week because of the uh, games. I mean, this Sunday. I think the night's available is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We'll see I'll, if we can I'll get. Honest, I'll be honest with you, mate. We might struggle for next week because there is a lot going on, ain't they? So right. Um, so yeah, we yeah. Might, we, we might, might have str- a week off and then look at it in a couple of weeks' time yeah. when we can then look at over all the games. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Guys, many, many thanks for everything. Like, thanks to this gentleman. Thank you to the legend himself, Mr. QOT. I'll look for his shirt on Facebook now. I swear, I've, I've invited you to the group as well. Yeah, I invited... yeah, yeah. Somebody's, oh my God, somebody's got on a, uh, a Corey Oates match worn Brisbane, but they want £200 for it. And I'm like, yeah. mate, I can't yeah. do that. Mate, I'm where like... do you see the other ones? Where do you uh, see all the Brisbane ones that come in there? It's amazing. Uh, oh, I, could have, I, could, I could end up very, very quickly skinned here yeah. with all this Brisbane stuff because I, yeah. I, I, you know, I love my match ones, but to get a Brisbane one, oh, yes. Yeah, but um, you're going to be seeing some of mine because I've got quite a few jerseys I'm going to be putting on there. None from Eagles. No, I might have a Sheffield Eagles chain, uh, a fleece I might be selling, not cheap, but uh, I'll have a look. It's an O'Neill one uh, from a few years ago. I think it's 2019, 18, mm-hmm. whatever it is. But... Uh, yeah, if anybody wants it, we're gonna have a look at QRT jersey now on Facebook and see who owns it this week. You get you get his, I'll get Corey's. Yeah, I'll get <laughs> well this because hey this Corey's, Corey's, bit, Corey's this, different shades to me, so I'm not sure yeah. it'll fit. Um, you can get Eddie Batty's and Corey's from London Broncos on eBay for 60 quid at the moment, 60 quid each. Yeah, no, I'm not paying 60 quid for that. I'm not paying London Broncos nothing for them. So it was not. But well, uh, it'd be a nice, it'd be a nice thing to have, you know, it's Eagles player and that, but um uh, yeah. Well, in came current, but I, I won't be paying that yeah. for it. Yeah, well, I'm saving up big for the end of season for these auctions because uh, I'm going after certain players. I'm definitely going after players this year. I'm well, definitely already, there's a, there's a few Hannigan, I'm going I've for. Already, I've already asked Mr. Hannigan who I'd like. I mean, I, I, as I've said before, I hope they don't auction them off to the highest bidder. I hope it's an open yeah. floor like it were the other well, year. I that, so. Well, let's put it this way. Then my, I think I've got about names for four to five. <laughs> so if I pull it off, if I pull it off, then. 
what I'll do is we'll see if we can do it and give one away now. Oh, yeah, don't forget, it's the shirt draw this week. It's um 31st of July. Uh, Richard's doing that. Uh, don't forget also, get your votes in for the... Uh, I mean, Anthony Thackeray won the votes. Join the Sheffield Eagles Supporters Association. Uh, if you want a jersey, it's £4 a month. Some people actually double it and pay 8 10 or something like that because we're crackers. <clears throat> and uh, so... Uh, we all do the things and we do the best we can for this club. Good luck to everybody this week. If you're playing, if they're watching the girls, if watching the ladies, we've got to give a special mention to the girls team that started up their training before the women's. So now there's another team involved as well. It's here, there, everywhere. It's fantastic. Um, Sheffield Eagles are here to stay and nobody's going to take us out of Sheffield now. So uh, anyway, we're going to get out of here. I've got, a, I've got a lot of downloading to do. So I'm not going to be streaming tonight. I'm going to be downloading lots and lots of interviews and putting them on YouTube. So you might see a bit of intake. Follow us on YouTube. We're on Eagles Chat. It's there. We've got 20 subscribers. We'd love to get about 40 or 50 subscribers by the end of the year. But, hey, if you want to, you do it. Do your best. We don't have a thousand because then we start getting paid. Yeah, and uh, I'm hoping to put the, <laughs> I'm hoping to put the Mr. Hetherington, Mr. Gary and Kath Hetherington interview on YouTube tonight. So mm-hmm. that's going to go on there so everybody can see that. Isn't it? Even if it's just the audio. I'll record it and I'll put it on YouTube just for everybody anyway. But uh, good luck to everybody. Thanks very much for this gentleman. He worked hard at the game yesterday doing interviews and everything. So he's got the names out there. Good luck to everybody at Leeds. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a wonderful time for everybody there. And we'll see you soon. We can't don't know when, but we'll let everybody know exactly when and where. And the last word, many, many thanks to the Mr. Legend himself, Mr. QLT, for coming on tonight. It's been wonderful. And uh, Yes, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Take care, guys. Good night. God bless. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.